Hello, Common Sensors. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today, we are going to audit the auditor. I'm going to take a look at a video by a popular auditor named Gav Syme, where he pulls over a police officer and proceeds to ask him a series of questions. I'm going to examine whether this is legal, whether this is uh, the right thing to do, and also whether what everything Mr. Syme is saying in this video is true or not. So stay tuned for the video. If you like my content, my name is Joe Pometto. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's a free way to support this show and to support these videos. Let's YouTube know that you're watching and it gives me a higher ranking. That lets me know to keep making more videos. Additionally, sign up for my email list below. You'll get a free PDF on the history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement just for signing up. You can unsubscribe at any time. It'll take you just a couple of minutes. Minutes. Also, I have a Patreon. Sign up for my Patreon. You can donate one to any amount of money that you want per month, and you will get weekly uh, updated PDFs, and also you will have uh, access to exclusive materials made by me, including videos, live streams, etc. But remember, this content will always remain free. It will always be free. I appreciate you just tuning in. Give me a like, comment, and a subscribe. So before we watch this video and we aud actually audit an auditor, let's do the real reason that you came here. The real reason that you're sitting here today watching Joe the Lawyer and the Common Sense Academy, the same time sip. I have my 9-11 Memorial mug and my favorite beverage in the world, coffee. You may have coffee as well, a diet drink, perhaps tea. Do you like Girl Grey? Do you like green tea? Maybe you're drinking chamomile before bed. Regardless of what your beverage is, raise it up with me. Give me a cheers, a kampai, a salute, and let's have our same time sit. <sighs> Tastes better when we sip it together. Now let's watch this video. Just flag this officer over. I want to make sure his unmarked car is uh, legal. Yes, sir. Afternoon, sir. How are you? Good. Hey, the reason I stopped you today is because I saw this car was unmarked. Is this a, a registered unmarked vehicle for undercover work, or? Okay, you're not allowed to have patrol cars that are that are unmarked. Are you aware of that under Washington State RCW? Mm, I'd have to look it up. But... Yeah, you really should do that. Um, so there's no mark. There's no indication on this car. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your name? Canfield? Uh, Canfield okay, first. Deputy Canfield. Can I see some ID? Can you see some ID? Of yes. Me? Yeah, I need to make sure that you're. No, I, you, you need to prove you're driving an unmarked vehicle, so I need to make sure you're actually a police officer and that you are. You have the authority to be driving this vehicle because you seem to be kind of doing something that's uh, clearly in violation of Washington state law. So I just want to make sure you are who you say you are. Okay. Okay. Well, Mr. Sun, I'm not going to play the game with you. This isn't a game. It's called law. Okay. Yeah. So can I see some ID and maybe license, registration, proof of insurance, sir? No, I'm not going to show you that. Yeah, this is my ID right here. That's not ID, sir. Yeah, well, this if I showed you a badge, if you stopped me, would you take that as ID? Come on. That's, that, let's be reasonable. Anybody can have a patch, sir. Okay, what about... What is, this, I mean, is it a big deal for you to show me some ID just so I can make sure? I can show it to you. That'd be cool. That's all I want. I just, I just like to make sure. Canfield GT51, can I see? Yeah, you can see it. You're not going to hold out your hand, though. Okay, let me just get a close look at it there. It's fine. Does that match this? That looks that looks legit to me. I appreciate it. I do. Mm -hmm. I really do. Driver's license? You got a driver's license too. I appreciate I, it. I do. I appreciate the cooperation. Are you stopping people in this vehicle? Yeah, I yeah. am. Okay, it's completely in violation of Washington state law, and you are culpable in that, the way the law is written. Okay, so, so you've admitted that you are in violation of Washington state law and that you are stopping people in this vehicle. So what I'm going to encourage you to do, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to write you up today. What I am going to encourage you to do to do is take this car back. I know you're smiling, but but we the citizens do have a right to hold you guys accountable. If I'm in open violation of the law, I mean, I, I could I could call a sheriff out here and demand that you be written up for this because you are in open violation of Washington State RCWs. OK, okay. so I, I, I just want you to talk to the sheriff about it. We have, there's a problem with this in Soap Lake as well, and this is why I'm bringing this up lately. I, w I really want you guys to be aware of this. I want you to follow along. Do you understand the safety concern? I mean, let's say my daughter's, it's 12 o'clock at night, my daughter's out driving around, 
and she doesn't drive yet, but you get the idea. And and she gets stopped by what is supposedly a police officer, but there's no markings whatsoever. And that's one of the main reasons you should not be stopping people in a car that's unmarked, because that's when the safety concern really comes in. Somebody doesn't know if they're being stopped by a police officer. So understand that every time you stop somebody in this car, you are you are in violation of Washington state law, and you can't do that. So if we see you stopped in this car and, and, and have doing patrol stops in this car, we're going to have a problem because it's illegal. If you continue doing this, you could be arrested for that. I, I could be arrested for driving an unmarked car? For driving an illegal vehicle and refusing to comply? Okay. Are you saying that if somebody else was driving an illegal vehicle and wouldn't cooperate, that they wouldn't be arrested? And how how so? How are you comparing? I mean, it's kind of apples and oranges. It's not apples and oranges. You're driving a vehicle on 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 Washington State roads, on a Washington State highway, and it's in violation of the law. And you are you're accountable to the law just the same as as me and anybody else is. You know? Okay. Yeah. No, it's it's in, yeah publicly owned any publicly owned vehicle, including county police, and it opens up with with directing at the officer specifically. So, and that's the key for you. So you want to read this because even if they give you an unmarked vehicle, you're legally obligated to not operate that unmarked vehicle because the law is defined at the officer and says you, as the officer, shall not operate the vehicle on the public roadways, a publicly owned vehicle that's not legally marked. That's good to know. I'll, I'll I mean, yeah, I mean, just follow up on it and let's just get it taken care of. It, it doesn't have to be a big deal. And I understand that there's certain instances, as is referenced in the law, where there is exemptions, but patrol vehicles are not included in that. So, okay. Sounds good. All right. Have you be safe weekend. out there, Mr. Canfield. Take care. And that is how you stop a police officer. I just, he was driving by. I flagged him over. Some people may say, well, this is petty. Leave the officers alone, Gavin. It's not petty to hold our police accountable. And this isn't just one issue. This isn't just about police or sheriff. It's not one thing. It's accountability. It's the lawlessness we see all across America where government disdains the people and disdains the law and thinks that they're above the law, we can't allow that. We the people are the sentinels of our liberty. The Constitution is a law that we placed on government. We the people must hold them accountable to the law. These guys are obligated to respect law and liberty and to follow the rules that we the people placed upon them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was an interesting video, don't you think? Usually, we're watching the police pull people over. Today, a citizen pulled over the police. I found this gentleman, Gav Syme, while doing some research on the internet. I came across a long article on Sovereign Citizens and Mr. Syme. Um, he's got a very popular channel. You can see, you can search for it on YouTube if you want to look him up, subscribe to his channel, watch his videos, whatever. I have no problem with that at all. Um, he seems to be a very active First Amendment auditor, auditing the police, uh, government institutions, etc., etc. He says that he's not a sovereign citizen, uh, and, and he distances himself from sovereign citizenship, but he also appears to have certain sovereign beliefs. Regardless of Mr. Simon, I have no opinion on him as a person one way or another, or his work as a whole, because I'm not familiar with it, but I want to talk about this particular video that we just watched. So let's dig in. There's three important pot, po three important points that I would like to make, and then we will freestyle a little bit. First of all, Mr. Stein states over and over again that police officers uh, cannot pull people over in an unmarked vehicle. Now, I am not uh, familiar with Washington state law, but what I can tell you is that generally they can pull people over in more unmarked vehicles. There's going to be laws on each state that have the requirements for an officer driving in an unmarked vehicle. And Mr. Syme actually gave it away at the beginning. He said undercover work. An important part of traffic enforcement is actually police having the ability to pull people over in undercover vehicles. Why is that? Why does that exist, you would say? Well, because when people see a marked police vehicle, of course they are going to slow down. And sometimes that's all the police want is they want to be a deterrent. But sometimes they want to catch people who are breaking the law as well. It's a two-part, it, actually it's a multi-varied uh, 
uh, effect that the police are going for. They want to catch people and they want to deter people. So the unmarked vehicle can serve a purpose that a marked vehicle can't. With a marked vehicle, the police have to hide if they actually want to catch you. But in the unmarked vehicle, you may not know that it's a police car. Therefore, they can they can track you with radar, laser, etc. All right, see if you're speeding, see if you're violating the law in some other way, and then pull you over. Is it true that an unmarked vehicle needs to be registered, as Mr. Syme indicated? Yes, that is true. However, they can perform traffic stops. Police in all 50 states can perform traffic stops in unmarked vehicles, okay? And that's an important part of police work. And technically, like he said, they can do traffic stops undercover. We think of undercover as, oh, you know, an officer like in Reservoir Dogs pretending to be part of a gang and collecting information on the, the inside of a gang, okay, but that's not true. Police can also do undercover work uh, in unmarked vehicles, uh, observing certain activities, et cetera, et cetera. So the fact that this officer is... is in an unmarked vehicle, he's performing undercover work. It's likely legal in all 50 states. Um, number two, this officer did not need to comply with everything that Mr. Syme was saying. He was nice enough to do so. This guy flagged him down, and this officer gave him the time of day, spoke to him, showed him his ID, his badge, etc., etc. Again, I don't know. I don't know state laws. This officer just could have kept on driving, though, okay? Uh, if a citizen approaches an officer who's doing undercover work, there's no requirement that the officer talk about talk to this citizen about it. Now, Mr. Syme talks about the pol the people holding the police and the government in check. I'm all for that. I'm all for doing it in a very legal and lawful way. I just want to make this known to my audience. You can go to a city council meeting, okay, and you can, uh, you can ask questions there. You can go to uh, some sort of open forum where the mayor can be accessed. You can ask questions there. Also, you can do what are called FOIA or Freedom of Information Act requests. Their the, government is required to provide certain documentation as to their practices, policies, and procedures. Okay, and you can get a lot of information on the police, maybe not everything, uh, from these FOIA requests. There's, there's a vast amounts of information that police departments are required to... Um, to put out there now it now here's the here's the the catch here and mr syme has a point here is you know the policies and procedures and paperwork may say one thing it doesn't mean that the police are actively and always following it okay so again i'm for auditors who are who are doing it in a legal and a legal way okay what this guy did here pulling the officer over talking to him if the officer wanted to comply and and willfully did it there's nothing wrong with it but if the officer didn't comply I it's my understanding of the law but that there is nothing compelling him to do so okay this officer was nice enough to talk with mr. Heim. he didn't have to and again there are other legal avenues that you can use to find out information on the policies and procedures of the police I suggest all citizens who are curious to exercise these, to go to city council meetings, to talk to your politicians. They're the ones who ultimately control the police, the mayor, city council. They're the ones that you should go to for answers and that should provide answers. And if they don't, okay, you can vote them out of office. The, the people do have a hand in controlling the way things come down through government. It's called democracy in the electoral process. And I think it's important that all citizens exercise it and and they stay informed. Uh, I don't have a problem with what Mr. Syme did. This officer decided to comply with him. He didn't have to. They had a friendly exchange for the most part. And finally, the third point that I would like to bring up is that impersonating a police officer is a serious criminal offense. Mr. Syme, during this transaction, says to the officer, can't you see why it's important that police on patrol are in marked vehicles? If you pulled my daughter over in an unmarked vehicle, how would she know if you were a police officer or not? And it's true. It would be a little more difficult because it's not on the vehicle itself. You're in an unmarked vehicle. 
you might say, who the heck is pulling me over? Well, again, number one, it's a very serious criminal offense for someone to impersonate a police officer. Number two, even in an unmarked vehicle, they're going to need a siren, okay, and a light. Boom, you need a light and the siren, okay, and that's a step that a criminal would have to take, and I'm not saying that they couldn't, but it doesn't make it super easy to pull someone over in an unmarked vehicle. You do need a light, boop, boop, okay, and a siren in order to pull someone over. Next, even an officer in an undercover vehicle performing traffic stops, and I researched this a little bit, the, in, in all 50 states, the officer needs to be uniformed. So the officer can't be in plain clothes performing undercover traffic stops. They still need to be uniform. This is an important thing to know. Mr. Syme didn't state this, but I will state this for my viewers. The officer should be uniformed if they pull you over in an undercover vehicle. Finally, you can call 911 during that tra traffic stop in order to confirm that that actually is an officer who is pulling you over. This is a nice little PSA that I'm providing here. Not everybody knows this. I recognize that. But let the officer know that you're calling uh, 911. It'll only take you a couple of moments and otherwise you're going to comply with every other order lawfully and politely. As I've said in many videos in the past, you can get away with almost anything during a police transaction as long as you're very polite about it and you let the officer know what is going on and you don't present a threat. So, um, just to uh, do a quick roundup of everything we talked about, um, number one, officers can perform traffic stops in unmarked vehicles. Now, I don't know whether they can just, you know, the concept of patrolling, but they can do traffic stops in unmarked vehicles. It's an important, important part of undercover traffic enforcement and even traffic enforcement can be undercover even though we don't necessarily think of it that way number two you can go to government do FOIA requests go to city council meetings make phone calls write letters talk to your politicians in order to hold the police accountable um, this officer didn't have to comply with uh, the um, the, Mr. Heim, but he did and he was nice and I have no problem with that. Number three, there are measures in place to prevent someone from impersonating an officer in an undercover vehicle. They're still going to need the light and the siren. They should still be uniformed and you can always call 911 in order to confirm that it's an officer. However, you know, if people truly want to break the law, they're probably going to do it one way or another. Uh, 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 Overall, I said this throughout the video, I have no problem with what Mr. Heim did here. Uh, it appears that everything he did was lawful and that this officer was cooperative. And that's my general uh, approach to auditors overall. As long as what they're doing is lawful and peaceful and polite, I have no problem with it. I do think it's a good thing to record the police in their transactions where you can in a lawful manner in order to hold them in check. Okay, but don't do it in a way that breaks the law or is in distracting is distracting or interfering with actual police work. Um, I don't know if I answered at the beginning of the video. I apologize. An auditor, for those of you who don't know, is someone who uh, these people who record the police, record government officials, ask them questions, etc., in order to keep them in check. A lot of them cross the line, they become unruly, and they interfere with police work and government activity, and that is when I do not condone it at all, and I think that it's wrong. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope we learned something. It was kind of funny. It's kind of funny. He's got, Mr. I'm has like 5 million views on this this video because he framed it as a citizen pulling a police officer over, which is what he did because the officer complied with it more or less. It's a bit silly and, and funny and entertaining. Um, at the same time, I hope we all learn something from it. I'm here to put a common sense spin on a lot of the craziness that we see out there with sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and other individuals. So I hope that we got some common sense out of my video after watching Mr. Himes.
video. If you like my content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show. Also, sign up for my email list. You'll get a free PDF drafted by myself on the history and examination of the Sovereign Citizen Movement. Also, sign up for my Patreon. You're going to get a PDF every week, and it will also unlock other exclusive content. However, my channel will always remain free. Always. Thank you for tuning in to the Common Sense Academy.